Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is a game that holds a special place in my heart. It was my first Souls-like, one of my first 100% completions, and the first game that I learned how to get good. So when I saw this game finally go on a decent sale, I couldn't wait to experience it again on the PS5. Now despite this being in my opinion the hardest FromSoft game, the percentage of people that have this Platinum is actually pretty high, which I'd honestly expect nothing less from the masochistic Souls community. But to make this even more difficult on myself, I decided to try and become the fastest achiever for Sekiro's Platinum Trophy. To obtain Sekiro's Platinum, there are three main steps we need to focus on. These steps include getting all four endings, collecting all 40 prayer beads and nine gourd seeds, and acquiring all prosthetic tools and skills. And to be the fastest achiever, we need to complete all of this in less than 10 hours. So our first attempt at this took us 6 days and 12 hours to complete. So if we do this, times this, plus this, it only took us 156 hours. This number actually hurts more when you realize that it's based off of the end game timer because the way that fastest achiever works on PSM profiles is different from your normal speedrun. Usually speedruns are based off of your end game time, but PSM profiles goes off of real time, meaning that the instant you pop your first trophy, the timer starts and doesn't end until every other trophy has been completed. This means that anything you do away from the game counts as a time loss as the timer will not stop if you need to make food, go to the bathroom, or give your dog attention because they don't understand you're trying to do a speedrun but you can't be mad because they're too cute. After waking up in a ditch and then sneakily making our way past the guards, not even a minute into the game we have our first trophy and the clock has started. We quickly die to Genichiro as the outcome of this fight doesn't actually matter and wake up by a sculptor with our new prosthetic arm and our second trophy. Our new prosthetic arm comes equipped with a grappling hook because why not and we quickly progress through the first area where we get our first prosthetic weapon and defeat our first mini boss, granting us a prayer bead and gourd seed. And real quick for those who don't know how the combat in this game works, enemies have two meters, one for health and the other for posture. Like with any other game, if the enemy's health is depleted, then they die. But in Sekiro, you can also instantly kill your enemy by filling their posture meter all the way and performing a finishing blow. Having covered the basics of combat, it's time to stop and talk to this confused old lady to get a bell we need to access another area later in the game. Then a little bit past Granny, we defeat an ogre to get another prayer bead and gourd seed. I was only about 5 minutes into my run at this point, and honestly I was feeling pretty good for my first time speedrunning a game. But of course that feeling didn't last for too long as shortly after I would die to the easiest no jump I would have way. to make this entire run and waste precious minutes of my time. At least we got a trophy for it. Having made it past the big snake, we approach our first main boss fight. There's a skip you can do with this tower here where you can jump to the outskirts wall and lure the boss off the edge, but you only have two tries to do it or the boss will destroy the tower. And not only did I choke the tower skip, I also choked the boss fight. Alright, that was a waste of time. Honestly, a pretty good run so far. On to my second attempt I go, and at this point, I really need to start saving some time. After a close call, we managed to actually do the skip. There we go, thank you. And get Gyo Beautiful. Come on, any day now. I know some people watching might be thinking that I'm lame for using skips, but... To be fair, it is a speed run, and that's the only skip I use for the entire run. And to make it up to you, here's an almost flawless bullet attempt that was just pure skill. No cheese. putting Ferdinand to sleep, it's onto the depths to get some more collectibles and fight more bosses. And this boys and girls is where I get my first taste of defeat. Not even an actual boss, but a mini boss was arguably one of my biggest hurdles in this game. Not only does this mini boss have an unblockable grab attack that would one shot me at my current health, okay. but the entire area is filled with snipers that trained under Chris Kyle himself. No, I got shot, that's BS. After 15 straight minutes, I finally managed to beat her and move on to cheese the final boss of this area, the Corrupted Monk. Oh. Thank you. 
since it had been a little bit without getting any trophies at this point, I decided to go shopping just to feel something. We then head to the castle to fight Genichiro for real this time, and after showing him who's boss, we skip through a ton of lore before significantly reducing the monkey population for these trophies. Once these bosses are defeated, we go back to the castle to speak to Kuro, only to find our adopted father, who gives us a choice. Either obey him and forsake Kuro, or to break the iron code and stay loyal to Kuro. And everything prior to this point of the run, we'll have to complete every new game cycle. But starting with this choice here, you have to take certain steps to get each of the four different endings. The first ending we're going for though is purification, as it is the longest and hardest ending to complete. What do you mean by that? And the first steps towards this ending require us to break the iron code and stay loyal to Kuro, which means we have to fight our father. This is where we finally use that bell that old lady gave us at the very beginning of the game, go back into Kuro's memory of Harada estate. It's important to make sure to clear this area as it will be the only time we come here, so after getting the final prosthetic tool, in every prayer bead in that area, we defeat Lady Butterfly for another trophy. After completing that version of Harada Estate, it's time to finish the setup needed for the purification ending. So after skipping through even more lore, we get another bell, where we can now access our father's memory of Harada Estate. We won't be going through that memory just yet though, as it has what many consider to be the hardest boss in the game, but it's important that you get the bell here because if you progress a little further, the bell becomes unobtainable, ultimately locking you out of this ending. With the bell in hand, it's time to travel to the final area of the game, Fountainhead Palace. Everything about this place makes it one of my favorite video game settings of all time, except for this monstrosity right here. But that's for later in the run. For now though, we beat the true corrupted monk guarding our path and advance towards the end of our first playthrough. Before fighting our next major boss, we do some cleanup and get every prayer bead that we skipped prior to the Fountainhead Palace. Assassino. We also fight this guy again, except this time he thought bringing his girlfriend would help him change the outcome of the fight. After making quick work of him though, she realizes her man ain't shit and dies from embarrassment. The last bit of cleanup we have to do for this playthrough comes from this dude just chilling in a pot. He asked us to perform a hit on this great carp, and after succeeding, we not only get a trophy, but Lapis Lazuli, which is a special upgrade material that we need at least 10 of for this trophy. The most you can get one playthrough is 6, so this is something we gotta keep in mind throughout our multiple playthroughs. Having finished all the cleanup, it's time to now take on the Divine Dragon. While this fight isn't difficult by any means, it's a fight that's difficult to forget just strictly due to the beauty of it. After using the points from that last fight to unlock the final shinobi art in the skill tree, we only had three main boss fights to go, the first one being the Demon of Hatred. While usually being a difficult fight, this was actually going to be one of our quickest bosses in this run because we'll be using the tower skip from earlier. Yeah, I know, lame, but I did my time with this boss. Trust me, I've beaten it legit before. This fight would also serve multiple purposes as upon defeating him, we get two more Lapis Lazuli. Defeating this boss legit once takes several minutes, and that's if you get it on the first try. The killing get every playthrough, and especially on New Game Plus 3, nah I'm good. But again, for those who are disappointed in me for using the skip, I'll offer you a dairy free owl fight. Out of all the fights so far, I'm surprised this wasn't the one that I got stuck on. Not only did I beat him pretty convincingly, but that was on my first attempt. With that victory, the setup for the purification ending was complete. All that was left to do was beat the final boss, 
To make sure I was fully prepared though, I defeated the final mini boss for prayer bead number 40 and upgraded my health and posture to their max level. Going into this fight, I was pretty nervous. I wasn't doing great on time and this was a fight I struggled with when I first played the game. That plus this is a 4 stage fight. We start off by having to fight Genichiro, which to be honest as much as we've had to fight him at this point, he's just here because they wanted to give him more voice lines, which I can appreciate. Then it's on to Ishin, the Sword, Spear, Glock, Wind, and Lightning Saint. You might as well have just given him Water and Earth and made him the Avatar. And as much as I'm hyping him up to be the boss of all boss fights, I beat him in the first try. Yeah, he's actually pretty easy when you get a good grasp of the game's mechanics. So after 4 hours and 10 minutes, we've got 23 out of 34 trophies and our first ending is complete. Since the steps up until the decision to obey or break the iron code are exactly the same for every ending, and I made it back to this point without any issues, we're going to jump right into the second ending for New Game Plus. This is the only ending where we will be choosing to obey the iron code and forsake Kuro, but by doing so we will be facing two new bosses. But quickly before getting into that, we need to discuss what this is right here. At the start of every New Game Plus cycle, you start off with Kuro's charm in your inventory. If you choose to keep it, nothing changes and you continue playing the game as normal. But if you decide to give it back to Kuro, not only does every enemy gain more health and posture, but you also receive chip damage from every attack, unless you perfectly parry it. Now you might be wondering to yourself, if this charm makes the game that much harder, why would you use it in a speedrun? And the reason is, you get 20% more XP per kill. I thought the reward from giving the charm back would outweigh the risk considering that the final trophy of this run would be maxing out all skill points, which would take around an hour of grinding levels, so I thought this would help reduce that time, which in hindsight might have been a bit of a misplay on my part. This is where the struggle part 2 begins. Oh, okay. Okay. I never remembered having any trouble with this boss fight before, but I promise you I won't ever forget after what she did to me. It got to the point where I think I was trying to flirt with this video game character, but that went about as well as you would expect. Emma, you're so f***ing sexy. Did you do your hair? Did you hear me? That's crazy. We got 69. Look at that, Emma. I don't want to play that. Oh, I told you not to walk like that. You. After half an hour of struggling with just phase one of this two-part final fight, I finally managed to make it past Emma. And then defeated Ishin on my first try getting to him. I guess Emma just gave me a little bit of performance anxiety. With ending number 2 now completed and 26 out of the 34 trophies, we were sitting at 6 hours and 20 minutes. Now while that attempt was actually really smooth until that final fight, you gotta remember the timer is still based off of real life time. Before starting New Game Plus, I took about half an hour break to feed and walk my dog. This time we actually take a bit of a detour before beating up our dad again, because to set up this ending, we have to feed this lady some serpent hearts. After getting revenge on the overgrown snake for being my first mistake in the run, the divine child finally gets her meal. And it must have been a pretty good one because she ends up shedding a few tears after, which we take because we need them to get the return ending. I really contemplated using a backup save here, finishing out the last two endings and the rest of the trophies in this playthrough. This would obviously save a lot of time, as instead of having to beat the entire game again, we could just save right here after defeating Ishin and get the last two endings. Doing that however would create a longer grind process for all these skill points, as every new game plus cycle grants you significantly more XP per kill. So with only an hour and a half left on the clock, we advance to our final playthrough. No setup needed for our final ending. The only thing between me and being the fastest achiever was my own skill, which I was going to need a lot of because with the time that remained, I would need a flawless run. I was feeling pretty confident though because these were all the bosses I had already beaten in every run prior, and none of them gave me any issues. I was feeling so confident actually that I was just skipping every idol before boss fights to be as time efficient as possible. But for some reason, before going into one of my last fights in the run, I hesitated. Now, unlike with Emma, this was a boss that I actually had history with, as this was the boss that I struggled with the most when I first played this game back in 2019. I struggled with this boss for over 8 hours for my first time playing this game. Since then though, I thought I had her moveset downloaded, and up until this point of the run, I didn't die to her a single time. Unfortunately though, it seems that history does indeed repeat, and having already gone over the time needed for fastest achiever, I called it there for the day and went to bed. 
Now on to day two, and I woke up feeling pretty terrible to be honest, but I didn't want to give up on this challenge. Even though Fastest Achiever was already out of the picture, Top 20 was so easily within my grasp. So I loaded the game back up, and of course, I managed to beat this dumb on my first try. But even in death, she remained victorious, because the recording file got corrupted. This game's f***ing ass. This game is f***ing ass. And after breezing through the remaining bosses and getting the final ending... Oh my god. Oh my god, that was so close. All that was left was four trophies for the Platinum. All I had to do was farm materials with an experience, which in the end still ended up taking over an hour to do. One more cycle after this. But finally, after getting to the last Gord Seed, fully upgrading all prosthetic tools and acquiring all skills, height of technique, acquired all skills, 100% trophies, Sekiro, let's go. The final in-game time for this Platinum speedrun was just under 13 hours. And if we were to go off this timer, we would have finished 5th on the leaderboard. But like I said earlier, the site keeps count based off of real time, so our actual placement was only 19th. Even if I wouldn't have gotten stuck on the true corrupted monk fight for a couple hours, I still wouldn't have come close to getting the fastest time. I made way too many other mistakes costing me a few minutes here and there throughout each run. But if you like this video and haven't yet seen it, check out this video here where I try to be the first achiever of a game's platinum. Still think I could have got third if not for that dumb bitch. <laughs>